right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am joined by David Wood, who is in Boulder, Colorado. How are you doing, David? I'm good, John. Feeling good. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. And David has spent uh, 20 years coaching thousands of entrepreneurs in 15 countries on how to do what matters, get there faster and be extraordinary. And what we're going to talk about today is how 30% more courage can double your revenue and your happiness. Um, so first off, uh, David, let you, let's uh, bottom line this a little bit. When, when you say courage i mean what do you mean by that if somebody was saying well okay well how, what, what what do i what do i need to be more courageous about yeah well maybe we could start by talking about the comfort zone yeah because i think a valid way to live life is to stay comfortable you know have a comfy chair make sure you like right now i've got my cup of tea next to me and it's on a coffee warmer so it's going to oh. stay hot right i've got my sweater on i've got it's a beautiful day like it's totally valid to say, I just want to be comfortable my whole life and I'll, I'll work towards that. However, the comfort zone can get pretty uncomfortable over time. And if all we do is stay comfortable, then we're never going to know what's beyond our boundaries and beyond those walls. We're never going to know what's beyond the discomfort, beyond the comfort zone. And that's where courage comes in. So a practical example would be let's say you've got a business and you want, uh, I, I'm writing a book right now called name that mouse because the elephant isn't the only animal in the room. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm trying to line up some endorsements. So it was uncomfortable for me to ask John Gray from men are from Mars, women are from Venus to write the forward to the book. Cause maybe he's going to feel awkward kind of putting something. It took a little bit of courage. Yeah. It took more courage to ask the second time after I got no response. It took even more courage to ask the third time because maybe now I'm just being annoying. I don't even know. But if I don't, if I'm not willing to be uncomfortable, if I'm not willing to screw up the courage, I never would have had Jack Canfield write the forward to my last book. And I never would have even had a chance of Richard Branson. I, I jumped through so many hoops just to get a no from Richard Branson and to get a no from Steve Wynn from Wynn Hotels. Mm -hmm. So if we stay comfortable, how are we ever going to know which celebrity would endorse our product or which 10 people would sign up for our service uh, or, or which, um, which audience, which, which uh, organization would have us come and speak, right? Do a TED talk, something like mm -hmm. that. Now, I'm not saying these are the things you should do. I'm saying, we want to find out where is our edge and what would be a little edgy for us just so we could practice 30% more courage because the rewards lie just outside the comfort zone. That's where most of the rewards are because no one else is going there. Yeah. Um, one of the things, though, I think is uh, people don't always recognize that they're in a comfort zone, do they? I mean, sometimes people think that, yeah, maybe they are being, you know, they are pushing things when just like you said, they have set up maybe artificial boundaries and they're just bumping up against those boundaries. And they think that's, you know, pushing, pushing things when reality, all it is, is just exploring the perimeter of your comfort zone. It's hard to know. That's why I'm a big fan of coaching. I'm biased towards mm -hmm. coaching. I mean, 20 years at one point, Last year, I had five separate coaches for different areas of my life. So that being said, it's so useful to have someone else who's outside of you who can push you. Like with my clients, every week, I ask the same question in my self-coaching form that they have to fill in before we speak. If you were fearless this week, what would you do? And that gets them thinking, hmm. And someone said, well, I'd ask so-and-so if they'd promote my product to their email list. I said, right. okay, great. You want to, you want to do that or not? And he's like, yeah, all right. It, I, all right. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Didn't take much arm twisting. He just needed someone to ask the question. Um, it's good. Like maybe you're already pushing the edge on so many different areas. Maybe you're, nothing can stop you. And so what you could use is slowing down. 
and maybe uh-huh. nurturing yourself a little bit, a bit more self-care. For other people, for most people, it's finding the edge. So I got a great exercise, John, for all our listeners, really simple. Grab a piece of paper and a pen, and at the top of the piece of paper, write this question. What would I do if I was fearless? I'm not asking you to be fearless. Let me just ask the mind, what would I do? What would life look like? Have one page for business and one page for personal. You might be like, like, what would I say to my partner? What would Mm -hmm. I ask for? What would I say no to if I was fearless? What employee would I have a conversation with? What celebrity would I ask for an endorsement? What stage would I speak on? What alliances would I ask for? Just let's just get our mind looking there because often the mind won't even bring those things to you because it's scared. And then you might circle two or three things on the list and say, all right, David told me to do this exercise. I'm going to do this exercise. I'll take on two to three things and then do it. Now, if you want to live that way, again, not not circling everything on the list, but 30% more courageous. If you want to live that way, I would say get a coach. Get someone who can constantly be asking that question. Just help nudge you. Sometimes these things aren't as scary as they look once you start seeing them in a different way. And Uh, it can start to to get more interesting. No, I I, I, t- I totally agree. And by the way, on, I, I 100% agree with you on the coaching thing. I always say to people is, um, you know, we're, we're, you know, we we get coaches for our hobbies, right? And we have no problem. I mean, you know, people are big into golf, no problem getting a golf coach, you know, right. I do martial, I do martial arts, right? I'm, you know, I'm, I've gotten, you know, a master and all that kind of stuff. But when it comes to this thing that actually puts bread on your table, we're like, oh, coach, are you kidding me? Um, so it always seems a little upside down to me. That's a really great analogy. I haven't thought about it that way. You know, you want to get better at tennis, get a tennis coach. I wanted to get better at dating. I got a dating coach. Like, what am I missing? What could I do better? Uh, what What should my profile look like? Let's let's look at my wardrobe. Like, I don't know what I should be doing. Um, I wanted to get better at moving energy in my body. Don't know much about it. Got an energy mm-hmm. coach. And you're right. There's something that puts bread on your table or... What about your own self-expression and your own intimacy and connection and love and enjoyment of life? Why would you not get a little help to help you see what might be right under your nose, but you haven't quite spotted it yet? Yeah, and and I mean the thing is, as you said, the thing about a, a coach is you've got an you've got an independent third party who's on your side, but is going to is going to push you and you can be honest with and and all of that and one thing i just wanted to come back to is uh you were saying about sometimes it's not even about pushing outside sometimes it's about even like stopping for a moment and like looking inside or 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 and i think we live in a very we're cluttered all the time we're distracted all the time there's noise everywhere and i i feel like people have become almost afraid of being with themselves and their own thoughts um because you know the the pervasive culture is like always have stuff going on you're saying people are lost in their own thoughts no i'm saying that they're so distracted by everything else that they're not even having their own thought they're not even spending sort of as you said like quiet time with themselves or taking a time out to to figure out things before i mean before even pushing beyond the boundary is like figuring out is actually spending some time to figure themselves out yeah so there are two there are two clear positions in life that we can have we can be the passenger in the car or we can be driving the car And what I think happens over time is we move from the driver's seat to uh, being a passenger in life. We're busy with email. We're in our patterns. We're responding to emergencies. Maybe we don't take care of the body until something goes wrong. And that's fine. That can be a great way to live life and can be enjoyable to just be at effect. In fact, many of the teachers who teach us about happiness uh, teach this method. Don't do anything. Just be at effect and enjoy. Uh, Byron Katie teaches loving what is. I think that's absolutely valid. And over time, if we've gotten into that position by default, it can be fun to jump into the driver's seat and be the author of our own actions, be the author of our own life. And to do that, we have to step out of our patterns. We need some kind of disruptor. Coaching can be that. 
therapy therapy can be that um, a deep experience, like doing a medicine journey, like ayahuasca in a country where it's legal uh, or not. Um, <laughs> these things can disrupt us. Uh, mastermind coaching, all of that stuff, have us think. Wait a minute, what? What could I be doing? Like one client I just worked with today, she's brilliant, running a very successful company. And she wasn't even aware of what she was tolerating until I asked her, like, what's frustrating for you this week? She said, well, you know, my employees have a different time frame than what I have. I want it done today and I get excuses and reasons why it's going to take two days. I said, well, that must sound frustrating. She's like, yeah, do you want to work on that? Yeah. I'd like a breakthrough in that. Okay. She didn't even know that's what she wanted. And then we got into it and uh, she left the call with a communication technique so that she can sync up her world with the employee's world and meet in the middle, uh, asking the question, what would it take? Just play with me here. What would it take to get it done in two hours? I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Asking the question, what if, what would it take? And she's excited. She's going to practice that. Because her pattern, and she, I don't think she knew this until we spoke, was she would push for it. And then if she got enough pushback, she'd give up and she'd go and do it herself. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, just play with giving up a little later. Just play with pushing back a little more and exploring. There might be a breakthrough for your, for your employee. Might be a breakthrough for you. So I, I get excited about what we don't know we don't know and having breakthroughs in, in that area. Yeah, no, that, that's a fantastic example. And something else that you just mentioned a moment ago, you know, about being either the, the driver, the passenger. I think sometimes we forget that we have a choice, like it's a conscious choice, because sometimes, um, you know, I think, I think people very easily think that I'm here, I'm stuck here, this is where I am. Uh, and they don't feel any sense of kind of ownership over where they are, or they feel powerless to change it. And I think, again, because you said it with a coach or a third party able to tell them, no, you have choices. And by the way, by doing nothing right now and just staying here, that's a conscious choice, whether you like it or not. Yeah, that's so true. Someone mentioned to me, I think it was last week in a session, she said, I said, what was most useful in this session? And she said, I have choices. I didn't, I was more going by default that I have to accept the way it is. And now I have choices. I can accept the way it is. I can get behind that. Or I've got three, three uh, things that I can do to possibly shift it. So I, I love people being at choice. Yeah. And I love your concept, like of the 30%, because here's another thing. I think that oftentimes people say, okay, I'm going to break out. I'm going to do something. I'm going to, and they set this lofty goal and it's like, I'm going to climb, you know, it's almost like metaphorically, like I'm going to climb Mount Everest immediately. And then, you know, obviously they, they don't make it to first base camp because um, they, it's great to have that goal, but you also have to recognize that yeah, you have to take it in steps. Every journey is is a set of steps, right? And what you're saying here is like, uh, yeah, just thirty percent more, a couple of things outside your comfort zone. And I think that's a really powerful message because I do think people setting far too lofty goals for themselves, um, and I think subconsciously they're almost setting unattainable goals deliberately without realizing mm. it. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, sometimes people come to me with goals like I want to 10x my business in 12 months. Um, that can be really cool. Mm -hmm. It can be really cool. Sometimes people are more motivated by a 10x and at least will have to ask the question, what would it take? What's that going to look like? What's it going to take? What do you need three months from now? What do you need one month from now? I had one client wanted to increase the business by 50% over a year. And after two weeks, he went, wow, I suddenly see how to 10x it. That's, he flashed on it. He said, will it be hard? Yes. Can it be done? Yes. What's it going to take? And then he worked backwards. Sometimes people, we work backwards and it's like, it's not very practical. And so my, my job is to give a bit of a reality check, but I got to be very careful because maybe it is possible. And so we need to look first there. Some people, if they set a goal that's unattainable and they don't hit it, they might be demotivated. Mm. What I, always, I think there's a platform called Experientify, which I'm a fan of. It's got 
courses on there and they have you choose three goals for a course. There's the middle of the road goal. Then there's the stretch goal. And then there's the uh, consolation goal that'll still be worth celebrating. Mm -hmm. And I really, I really like that. Okay, this is what we're shooting for, but really we're going for that higher one. And if we hit the middle one, we'll be very happy. If we hit the other one, we'll still be happy, not as happy. Yeah. So, um, so when you when you work with people um, initially, right, as you said, I mean, how do you, because I think shining a light on things is very powerful, but um, how often do you do you have people who suddenly understand or you can help them understand that they, as we said, I mean, they're choosing to stay inside their comfort zone. But the other thing is, maybe they're doing a lot of things for other people or or would they think what's expected of them as opposed to what they really want? Yeah, there's a book called Five, Five Something of the Dying, Five Secrets of the Dying or something like that. And, and um, one thing it mentions that people over and over said on their deathbed, they wish they'd lived life more for themselves instead of for others, like their parents or their partner or their kids or their family or their friends, they wish they'd lived more of what they wanted. And so that'll usually come out in a session. If, if someone indicates they want something, it might not seem like they're shooting big enough. But I'm like, well, what if you went for this? Well, how would that feel? They said, well, that'd be amazing, but can I really have that? So they're mm. coming up against do I deserve it? Am I asking for too much? So we get to do a bit of work on that. Um, what a, what a great, what a great question. Yeah. And, and the other thing I think uh, I've been exploring a lot, like over the last while is uh, we always assume that, uh, that people don't do things because they're afraid of failing. But I, I've, I've also noticed that fear of success is almost as powerful, if not more powerful, because, uh, you know, people say, oh, yeah, I want to do this or whatever. And then they suddenly go, hmm, if I do that, then maybe I'll have to move or change. Maybe my life changes or whatever. And they talk themselves out of it, not from fear of failure, but fear of actually it coming true. It's possible. I'm, I'm not sure. I have had some clients that, again, coming back to I don't really deserve it. Or the mind just says it's not really possible because maybe no one else has done it. Um, I just started thinking about a client of mine who came up with this idea for a product it's called Beauty Pops. Mm -hmm. And his partner would always like freeze fruit mixtures and put it on her face as a beauty wow. treat. And it worked so well that, uh, and he's a pharmacist. So he spent the next two years formulating uh, a, a formula that's very healthy for the skin and the glowing that women are getting. It's, it, he just sold out. It went viral. It's gone crazy. He just had a, he's up to a hundred thousand in sales this month and he just, just launched. And then wow. he said, we're out of our product and still they got 400 pre-orders. People are just pouring in, but he, he just created, Hey, this is possible. Why don't we do this? Why don't we see? And then boom, so anything that'll get someone, maybe it's, I don't deserve it. Maybe it's not even possible. Maybe it's, I'll be successful. And then I've got friends who are successful and yeah, there's been some difficult things out of it. I got one friend has gone dark because there's so much negative press about him and so many people wanting to attack him. And the more successful he gets, the more he opens himself up to that. Right. I've got another friend, um, Nicole Daydon created something called one taste which started growing and getting bigger and bigger and movement and then got a really negative article in the new york times i think um people started coming out of the closet and <clears throat> attacking so for sure i think each of these things if it comes up in the psyche should be explored to see what for you would slow you down from explosive growth what holds you back from just saying i am full on on this i'm a massive evangelist for my product for my service i am unstoppable i get i get excited about that question uh, no absolutely um so as as we as we wrap up um here what is if you were to say to somebody like this week this weekend or whatever 
What is, what is one thing to challenge yourself or challenge your thinking about to start the the journey of maybe being a little bit more courageous? What's what's a one little baby courageous step? Mm. I would get a piece of paper and a pen and right at the top of the piece of paper, what would my life look like if I thought bigger and acted bigger? What would my life look like if I was fearless? I'm not asking you to be fearless. We all have fear, but just what would it look like if I was fearless? This is a way of harnessing the mind and, and starting to, to see what could be out of the comfort zone you don't have to go and do it all, but let's start with that. And then if something resonated for you on this call and you're thinking, yeah, I do want some support. I do want to think bigger. I want to act bigger. I want to know on my deathbed that I gave it everything. I did not hold back. Then um, reach out to me and see uh, and request a 15-minute laser session. We'll see where the low-hanging fruit is for you and see if coaching even makes sense for you and if we're a fit. And if we're not, I hope the 15 minutes was really useful. And if we are, you'll have a coach and strap in for a ride. <laughs> I love it. Listen, David, thank you very much. All of David's information is going to be below this video. Uh, but before we go, David, please do tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. Sure. Well, I, I start with doubling revenue and time off for your business. That's where we start. But you're probably getting a sense of from this interview that along the way, life comes up and that's where it gets exciting for me. Like how do you show up in your life for yourself, for your partner, for your kids? So it's about time off. It's about doubling revenue and it's about your own growth and being extraordinary. And uh, I have a special link that I've created for listeners that'll Thank take you. you to a hidden page on my website with a gift basket of goodies. And you can get uh, a checklist on how to double revenue and your time off in the fastest possible time. There's a six minute video on how to apply it. And there's how to get on a 15 minute call with me. Plus I have a new book called name that mouse uh, coming out, which will help you be the badass leader and human that people want to be around. And you can get all of these things at myfocusgift.com. That'll take you to the hidden page of my site where you can get this gift basket of goodies, My Focus Gift. Dot com. Fantastic. Um, listen, David, that's uh, uh, fantastic. Great talking to you, Dan. Great, great insights. So thank you so much for that. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.